Morning church, morning YouTube as always. Love to be in God's house. No place I'd rather be. What a, what a privilege and an honor it is to handle the word of God. We're going to have a little different message today, and I pray that it, it attracts you and it, and it gets you more involved and it gets you a little more excited than even normal. I'm going to start back when I was a young child. I would look in the mirror many times when I was young and look in the mirror and say, who am I? Why am I here? How did I get here? Now, I knew my parents brought me into the world, but it was a process that I struggled to understand. And through my teen years, it kept getting more and more, and I kept asking the Lord, why am I here? This is the question every man and woman one day in their life has to answer for or ask, who am I? And it's important. Let's go to the Word of God. Exodus 3, 9 to 11. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, and that may bringeth forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go into Pharaoh, and I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now listen to this. One of the most awesome men of God, Moses, we know that. He brought him, he, he helped, now through God using him as an instrument, he parted the Red Sea, you know, he went to the Lord, he went to Mount Sinai, he spoke to the Lord, he was in the presence of the Lord more than most anyone, it was a beautiful thing, he was powerful, he was powerful because God was behind him, he was being God's glory and, and shining, so on and so forth, but I struggled to see that the Lord had parted the Red Sea and Moses still had a struggle. Moses, like many, had the fear of public speaking. Okay? If you ask people, they'd rather go in shark infested water than speak in public. Don't ask me why. But I used to have that fear way back in the day. But again, so Moses, unlike like most Americans, had a fear of public speaking. But Moses, unlike Americans right now, had no fear of gun violence, had no fear of world wars, had no fear of corrupt government, and didn't even have a fear of getting physically ill. So, unlike uh, the unique thing about Moses, he didn't go to be useful for God's will like Apostle Paul. Let me explain. Saul, when he, when he was Saul, he was breathing, you know, he's going to follow conviction and, and try to put the Christians in jail. He had the, the road to, to Damascus and he had the bright light experience and he went right to be useful for the Lord from that moment on. Moses is a little different. Moses didn't leave Egypt being a prince till he was 40. He had to wait, I love this, another 40 years being in the desert, being a shepherd, to be ready and useful to God. Lord, who am I? That Pharaoh will listen who I am, that struggle to speak, to be an oracle of God, a man that speaks what God puts upon him. Who am I that been a shepherd for 40 years, but you are calling me to lead your very people out of Egypt. Let's go to Exodus 4, 10 to 14, and we'll see how it works out. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not elegant, neither here, herefore nor since hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, I listen to this, Who hath put man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb or the deaf, or who seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, I love this. O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. He said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Now here's where it gets interesting. Moses who the Lord has shown him, he had the staff, and he said, lay the staff down, and he turned into a viper. 
Then he picked it back up and it became a staff again. Then he said, put your hand upon your, your chest or your breast and it turned to leprosy. And then he said, remove it. And it turned back to white, normal skin. Beautiful and healing. So I, I struggle and I'm thinking, yet yeah, he's seen and witnessed all this stuff. And he's seen the burning bush and he heard the Lord speaking to him. Yet yeah, he's struggling out of his boldness or his ignorance. I don't know. Maybe they both go together to say, Lord, I know you created my mouth, but I still am not able to speak because I still struggle to speak in his stubbornness, but God knew, here's the key, God knew he was stubborn, but God knew his heart was true to him. He became, he used Aaron to be his mouthpiece for him. God was being glorified through the both of them. Moses no longer from that point on became a mighty man for the Lord, for God's glory in all things. Lord, who am I? Does this question to God sound familiar to you? The question I have asked myself numerous times in numerous ways. Do you ask the question to God, have you in the past? Throughout the message, whenever you hear, Lord, who am I, make it personal. Put yourself in the I category. So take the message that it is you, the Lord is speaking to you. So when you hear, Lord, who am I, that's you. First time I have said to the Lord, who am I? I didn't come to know Jesus Christ as my personal savior till I was 23 years old. Now I, I kind of, I, I laughed about this and this came to fruition yesterday. I'll be 63 in December, meaning 40 years. Got it? 40 years, Moses, 40 years, all right? Kind of neat. I don't think I'm gonna wait another 40 to preach though, because that would make me quite old. I wonder my purpose. And I'm not talking about going to school, getting a job, finding a wife. I wanted to know what my purpose was in life. So I questioned, Lord, who am I? Who am I? I asked this question again and again. Lord, who am I? But now here's where it gets personal. I said, who am I that you are willing to put your beloved son upon the cross for my sins that sacrificed his life? He faced the beatings, he faced the ridicule, and experienced all things that I and anyone in this world were experienced, but he experienced them all. How, how am I that lived 23 years for all things, feeding myself, my pleasures, my lusts, things that I, I did for the world or for myself and not for the Lord? Why would I be given something so precious why would I, why would you be given something so precious? I don't know. I couldn't even imagine it. And many times I didn't even care to obtain it. And that is the gift of salvation. Many people struggle. Lord, who am I that you gave me the gift of salvation? That your grace was something I once never considered because it seems too good to be true that might be you today here or you watching a lot of people they, they struggle that he is given something free we know strings attached in the world nothing is free you always got to pay in return but god through his grace and mercy gave us the most precious gift and that was his son ephesians 2 1 to 9 if you may ephesians 2 1 to 9 and you have he quickened who were, now listen to this, make this personal, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. I did for 23 years, okay? According to the prince of power of the air and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But, but, and let me put a but, it brings your attention. But God, who is rich in mercy, for great love wherewith he loved us, even when we, you, me, were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. 
by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. You hear me? A gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I said to the Lord, who am I, that even when I was dead in my sins and living for my sins, that I should be offered, I should be offered the gift of salvation, that you would overlook and forgive me of my past ways and lusts. I live for the things I desired. Those things that I desired had nothing to do and did not do anything with God as my Father and Jesus Christ as my Savior. This is a question many people struggle with to allow God to give them the answer Lord, who am I? But a wicked sinner with no goodness or righteousness in my life, in your life. Yet you're presenting me with the way to overcome myself, to go from Lord, who am I? Listen to this, Lord, who am I? To say, I now know who you are and you are my precious beloved savior. Dear Lord, you gave your life for my life. Something no one should have to do and something no one usually will do, but you still did it. Lord, who am I? And your response is, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Confess in me and trust upon me, and I will come in and sup with you, and I will be your Lord and Savior. Today do you ask, Lord, who am I? This is a question everyone has to ask. I hope you have the right answer. Perhaps you're like many, not sure on what you believe, who you believe, or, or whatever it may be. Here's the other problem, and I, I find this many times in a world, a world that has too much population, but yet many feel alone. They feel in despair. They feel they have nowhere to turn because they realize the world, and this is the truth, will never give you comfort, peace, or hope. Many people have fears of so many things, but the most difficult fear for most is being alone. Anytime I visit a nursing home, I'm here to tell you from my heart, anytime I visit a nursing home and I see people that no one ever comes to visit them, they have, they may have family, family don't care if they, you know, if they don't have family, and I understand, but still, they are just dying and thriving for attention just to let someone know that someone still cares. Today, if you feel alone and you got to, you know, some people say, oh, no, I get all the, but some people are still alone. Even when people are around, I'm here to tell you, when you have the Lord in your life, you will never be alone. He will always provide love for you and always give you comfort through all things. Do you hear the Lord saying to you today? He's saying, don't question me who I am, but come and allow your hearts to open to the love I have for you, the promise and the gift of eternal life. To you that still ask this question, Lord, who am I? Have you accepted what the Lord is willing to give? Or are you still, a lot of people struggle with this and it frustrates me, but I'm still human. Or are you still in the Lord, who am I mode? Let's go, you don't have this, John 3, 16 to 18. You all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only, only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it's such a beautiful scripture. I even start to see it and praise God behind the goalpost of NFL football games once again. I love it. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth, that here's the promise, and God's promise is a covenant. He never breaks a covenant ever. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Who is God, the one of all mankind? Those that ask the question, Lord, who am I? He is the Almighty. He is the Almighty. He is the maker of heaven and earth. He is the maker of everything. He is the one that gives you breath to breathe. And just it's, it's just unimaginable. People don't get it. But 
It's the world we live in. Anyway, if God gave up his son for all mankind, we understand it includes everyone. Listen to this. Everyone, it says all. All means everyone. What does that mean? That means that you don't care about your financial background. He don't care what side of the tracks you're on. It really don't matter. He don't care about your education. He don't care if you didn't graduate high school or if you have PhDs and doctorates and you name it. He don't care. He don't care the color of your skin. He don't care about your past, whether it was in religion or it was in a cult or anything else because he don't care. The word tells us that God so loved the world that if you embrace him, he will embrace you when you come to believe upon him. And here's the other thing is, no one in this world will have the excuse they never knew who Jesus Christ came for. He came for all to give them the gift of life. All right. Lord, who am I that I thought I needed to work? Listen to this. Been there. We've all been there at one time, most of us. I need to work for my salvation, as I told you in the past. People think, it can't be free. The gift of grace can't be that simple. Salvation's free. But one thing one has to do is willing to open it. I need to work for my salvation or to strive for per perfection in my religion. This is why I'm here. I'm a religion buster. I, I don't like the way some religions try to lead people down the wrong path. In my religion or tradition, because your grace has saved me when you gave up your only, your beloved, begotten son upon the cross for me and for all mankind. The beauty of grace is available to all, all. And it also shows us no matter how good we try to be or how religious we claim to be, all these things are done. You know what done is? Please don't make me explain it to you. They are done in the eyes of God. They mean nothing because the word tells us his grace is sufficient for me. And it is, praise God. For by grace you have been saved through faith and, the, and it is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. I love that. The gift of God. Not of works. You know why it's not of works? Because man would, would strive to do works to say, man, I'm so much more religious than she is. So guess what? I'm a higher rung in heaven. That's why man would think. But no, God put it all out there in an even playing field. We all have the same opportunity. Friends, like you asked the question at one time, Lord, who am I? That you have presented the gift of salvation to me. That all that confess and believe in their hearts on what your son has given, Lord, who am I? That no matter what, it's, listen to this, that no matter what man tells me, there's a lot of people out there professing everything but the truth and the true gospel that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, period. Tells me what man tells me, religion tells me, nothing in the world that I can do, nothing any man or a church can do because you did it. I could never do enough works to be worthy of the kingdom of God, nor could you. We would never be good enough. We would never be holy enough. We'd never be righteous enough on our own account. Praise God, Jesus Christ has made us righteous. Lord, who am I that you have found me and anyone that believes in your beloved son made me righteous even when I lived a life of unrighteousness. Prior to believing in the Lord as your Savior, we have act, we did not have, I'm going to put it this way, we did have access to God the Father. People say, you know, I pray to God all the time, but nothing happens. That's because you don't know Him. You have to accept His Son, Jesus Christ, in order to have that veil. Yes, the veil was torn. Jesus died, the veil was torn in half. So we would have access to the Holy of Holies, the Holy, the Most Holies. We have access to come and sit with God the Father. But many never have done that. And the veil is still together for them. No, I know that when Jesus died, the veil was torn permanently. I understand that. But a lot of people still have the veil in place because they never believed upon Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, 9. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. 
For by, listen to this. I bolded to sound. It's a reason for it. For my faith, I've been made righteousness, made righteous. Wow, that's the best thing ever to happen in our lives. We don't deserve it, but God's grace gives it. Lord, who am I? Listen to this. There's a lot of people that struggle in the church and they don't really understand who he is. Lord, who am I that I no longer fear death? Hear me? No longer fear death. I no longer worry about tomorrow because my faith tells me tomorrow will still come. And because I know you as my Savior and I know God is my Father. All is well within my soul. I'm not worried. I know it's going to be brighter. I know my future is going to be brighter. I'm not talking in this country. I'm talking the day I go to be with my Lord. The day you go to be with you, Lord. Guess what? It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be something we can never imagine. Who am I that you would give me so much and I have given you nothing? Do you hear me, what I'm saying? You have given me so much. And yet I have given you so little. First John 2, 1 to 5. My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. I love using this all the time. With the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, that he is the propitiation for our sins. That not for our ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, listen to this, is a liar. Well, we're here to tell you, liars don't inherit the kingdom of God. And the truth is not in him, but he that keepeth his word, in him verily in the, is the love of God, perfected hereby, know that we are in him. Lord, who am I that when I fail you so many times in my life, in my walk, you still call me your son or call me your daughter? Who am I that you gave us Jesus, the most loving advocate that speaks to you on my behalf out of love and obedience to the Father and out of love for you and me? Lord, who am I because I don't deserve the love you give me. I don't deserve the forgiveness you always provide, yet you still provide it no matter. You don't keep score on our failures. You don't keep score on my failures. Because you did, I would lose the game. You would lose the game of life and death. But praise God, we do have a loving advocate and we call him our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, who am I that you gave us your eternal word, hallelujah, for all that world to embrace, to read, to understand, to see the goodness of you and who you are, the goodness of your grace, your love, and your mercy, to see the love of the world will not ever comprehend because they don't understand, they can't see and feel and understand through the Holy Spirit how deep the run, the, yeah, the, run, the love really runs. People really struggle for love. The world is hungry for love. But we also understand that every man and woman has a choice. We know it's called free will. I share with a lot of people and they'll tell me, believe what you want to believe and I'll believe what I want to believe. And I tell them, believe what I believe because Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the only promise that will give you eternal life. Amen. But it is what it is. Amen. There is no more perfect example I use it all the time because I just love it. Than the two thieves upon the cross. The one realized he deserved to die. He's seen his crimes before him, whether it was murder, whether it was rape, whether it was thieves, two thieves on the cross, it says, but I think it was deeper than that. They were in a history, they were in a life of crime. They deserved their due. They deserved the Roman punishment upon the cross. But he, he sees that Jesus Christ don't deserve that. He is an innocent man. And his heart is open to him. And he says, I know I deserve to die. I know I deserve to go to hell. But Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. But as many in the world, the other man, like many people in the world, ridiculed Jesus, said, if you are the Christ, the anointed one, you are the son of God, then remove yourself from the cross. Remove us from the cross. And yes, I will believe. That's heartbreaking, but was still given 
the two dying, the one was given the most precious gift of forgiveness. The other one could not see what Jesus Christ was promising to give him, and he died with a hardened heart. He could not see, listen to this. This real, I struggle with this, I really do. He could not see God's love even when he was dying. Lord, who am I that I would ever question your true holy word or anything in my life because you are far wiser, far more knowing, far more loving and caring, and far more holy than I can even imagine. Yet at times I may question why things in my life happen. And rather than completely trusting in you in all things, I question you and say, why me? Lord, who am I that you gave us the air to breathe and the hearts that beat in our chest? And how many times we fail to see that you give us and look and give us everything in our lives, but yet we feel we deserve more. We deserve nothing because you gave us everything. 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 17. 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 17. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, that hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make, listen to this, make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This isn't in my messages, this isn't in my notes, but I'm just gonna give you a couple little tidbits here. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Why do children need to be in church? Because when they come the age of accountability, they are able to make the decision to trust Jesus Christ with their life. Amen. People don't get that. It breaks my heart. All right. Lord, who am I that you have inspired men to, that love you more than anything? You know it. All but one died for being a martyr. All of them but John, as we know. Things depend on words you put upon their hearts. Words that will stand the test of time for all time on in, in earth and on, you know, on earth and in heaven. Lord, who am I? I pray that I continue in the things I've learned through the word, seeking to be more like your beloved son than myself. We understand there's nothing good in us. There is nothing good in us. People struggle with that in the flesh, but only with the Lord through the spirit has changed. And we hope we hope and we pray and we desire that we become more like you and less like us. Lord, who am I that through hearing the word preached to me and reading the word that my heart is open to it and seeing the goodness of your love and your mercy and that the ways of righteousness and the ways that we need to follow. Only the fool, I put it out there, only the fool continues in the ways of unrighteousness that lead to the path of heartache and heartbreak. But the wise man knows nothing is more important than to have the word etched in their hearts, in their minds, in their spirits. So when he struggles in the world and when his trials and temptations and tribulations come along, he don't give up. He don't worry. He don't fall over and say, why me? He stands tall and says, Praise God, the Lord is by my side. Hebrews 4, 12. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Person even is dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word will show us where we walk or we don't walk. I'm here to tell you, the word will convict you if you're not walking where the Lord calls you to walk. The word directs your path of righteousness and convicts us of all unrighteousness. The activity or function of the body and soul, listen to this, of a person each has a different function. A lot of people think the soul and spirit are one and the same. Uh -uh, sorry, they're not. Everyone has a soul, but only those that trust upon the Lord are given the presence of the Holy Spirit. The soul definition is this, 
The soul is our humanity and makes us feel emotions, okay? The spirit is our deeper connection with the Lord when we believe in God and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Paul desired, Paul, my favorite apostle, he's not yours, I'm sorry, but he's mine. Paul desired that those that believe upon the Lord will have it such that their whole spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless until his return. Lord, who am I? I pray, I hope, I desire to read the word, to follow it, to be true, to understand when the Holy Spirit leads and guides me. I need to be obedient to listen to its calling. I pray I'm, if, that I'm out of tune with my flesh, not wanting to fill its desires. Lord, who am I? What desire to live, to live a life worthy of my calling? Are you worthy today? Are you worthy to live the worthy of your calling? It's a beautiful thing. And we've been given so much. We've been given the promise that we are his elect. We are his elect. We are promised the gift of salvation. We are his elect because we now are members of the true church that will reign in the kingdom forever. First, that's my last scripture. First Thessalonians 5, 15 to 22. First Thessalonians 5, 15 to 22. This is, boy, this is good stuff. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. We know that one. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. A lot of people in the church that are quenching the spirit right now, and they wonder why the walk is a mess. I'm here to tell you. Despise not the prophesizings. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. And the most important, in my opinion, for what I just read, abstain from all appearance of evil. Paul wrote this to the Thessalonians, but it is written to all men and women that pick up the word of God to read it. This is a guidebook to life. The word of God is our guidebook to life. These are some quick tips that if you follow these things, you're going to be doing pretty good in your walk with the Lord. Lord, who am I? Well, you already know who I am. I pray I follow the word and I just read and trust you in all things. We never replace evil for evil. The word tells you when someone does something to you, it's your, it's your God given right. No, it's not. It's a world given right. It's a world given right to avenge, to attack, to come back even harder than they came at you. But that's not what the Lord tells us. The Lord says, if someone offends you, don't go back at them and attack them. Forgive them because I have forgiven you more than you will ever forgive anyone why would anyone think they could be do you know and the lord tells us that vengeance is mine what does that mean that every man and woman will pay the piper if they don't know the lord guess what it's going to be too late they're going to know what they're in store for and it's not pretty but his scales of justice always balance out we have to have faith to believe that his vengeance is far better and more accurate and more holy and more true than we can ever accomplish why would this is what i put it out here why would anyone think they could do a better job or do anything better than compare to god i believe the dumbest man with an iq of a shoe would even understand that rejoice have joy in your life to show the world i don't care what's happening and many things that most people worry. But I have the Lord in my life. He's my rock and the joy of my salvation. Pray without ceasing. Praise God. Simply put, pray through all things. When do most people pray? When do most Christians pray? I'm going through this thing. I don't know how to handle it. Will you pray with me? It says pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean when things just come. It says when any time the Lord puts something upon your heart. No matter how big or how small, you pray for it. We don't wait till the problem arrives. We beat it at the past. We're praying already that we will be strong in the Lord and have faith and know that his love will endure us through all things. Give thanks in all things. Shows us that we have faith and trust in the Lord. Even when things go difficult, we don't curse God like the world, you know, the world curses. We don't say, why me? We say, he has given me so much and I know he promises he will get me through this no matter what happens in this life. 
Quench not the spirit. When Jesus left the disciples, he promised them the comforter. Isn't that wonderful? He didn't say, I promise you this strict disciplinarian. He said, I promise you the comforter because he knew he would struggle. So he said, I promise to send you the comforter who is the Holy Spirit. He promises you the same Holy Spirit to allow the Spirit to lead you in your life to comfort and yes, to convict you when you're struggling or you're walking away from the word of truth, you're walking down the path that this is how awesome a God the Father we have. He don't say, let him go his own way. He's going down a slippery, slippery, I can't even say it right, slippery slope into the pit of disaster. He starts convicting us or giving us an opportunity to show us how much he loves us so we don't get deeper and deeper into our pit. And the most important, abstain from the appearance of all evil. This is so simple, yet so many people get it wrong. I'm here to tell you this. They, they dabble in things they shouldn't dabble in, and they dabble in and they realize it's something they shouldn't have. We're going to put it out there. Friends, if it looks like a pig, squeals like a pig, smells like a pig, chances are, my friends, it's a pig. If you're approaching something and your spirit is convicting you, and it don't feel right, and you even know that it is not right, then you need to abstain from it. It's simple, but so many times, let's just listen to this, this is important. So many times we fall or trip or get caught up in the appearance of evil. We think, well, I'm strong enough in my walk. I can handle this. And then before you know it, it went from the toe to the ankle, to the knee, to the leg, to the whole body. And that's how Satan works. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all ways, it doesn't say in most ways, it doesn't say in some ways, it says when you feel like it, on Sunday, yes, that's fine. It says in all ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Lord, who am I? One that desires to trust you more in my life, not waste time on worry, on my own thoughts, but the thoughts that you direct my heart with. One that will seek to love you more, not just words, as many in the church claim to love you, but one that will spend time with you in word, in prayer, and in your secret place, in my secret place. Lord, who am I? One that desires to love better than I currently am doing. None of us love the way we're called to love them. I'm sorry, I put it out there. I know I certainly fall short. One that will share the love of Christ, not just with some simple words, but with actions. We are called to be his feet, his hands, his eyes, his mouth, his ears. You get the whole. We're called to be all for Christ and to show it. Lord, who am I? One that realizes my past is just that. This, this is going to hit. Listen to this. It's really important. One that realizes my past is just that. I can't undo the wrongs I did. I can't hurt those I hurt. I can't fix what I have broken. But you have told me I love you. And I want you to let go of the past because it cannot be redone. But the future you can seek to live with me, to love me more and more than ever before. Lord, who am I? One that was broken and one that you fixed. One that never knew real love until I came to know you. One that knows my life is not perfect and never will be perfect. But you are making me into the person I need to become because I'm striving to live for you and not for anyone or anything else. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God be the glory. Um, listen to this. I'm finally getting who I am because of who you are. Let's close in prayer. Dear loving Father, we just thank you for all you do. We thank you for the word represents. I thank you that you use me as an instrument for you. I am the mouth that you have chosen to speak to the people here, the people on YouTube, Lord. And I'm thankful for that. It's not just, it's just not something simple. It's something that you have called me to do. Yes, it took many years for me to finally get it, to understand who I am, who am I with you, Lord. 
And I'm finally starting to get it because my ignorance and my hardened heart is finally starting to go the way it needs to go. And that is a way for me. And I'm learning to love you more, Lord, just as we're all called to do. But Lord, I pray for anyone that's struggling today. They may call out, what am I here for? What am I here for? You know, I'm told to do this, I'm told to that. That's not what it's all about. We're here for a purpose. We're here to give God the glory. And we're here to trust in him in all things. And how do we do that? We don't have to go to 400 religious classes. We don't have to shout from the mountaintop. All we have to do is confess and believe upon what he has given us by the way of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, that we trust him with our hearts and our spirits and our souls, Lord, and that we will do what we can. We know that we have been forgiven from this point on. And now we, are, we went from forgiven to living. We love you, Lord. We give you the glory and everything. And we just praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.